Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Part 12. And today we dive deeper into Act 2 with Hanako, so let's push on, folks. The urge to skip class rises in my gut. I shoot a glance at Hanako, who shows no signs of moving either. Not just yet. The interval between the warning bells and the end of lunch bells passes in the blink of an eye. We really should go. People will freak out and start a search party if we skip. <sighs> You're right. Slowly, she rises to her feet and I follow suit. Silently, we make our way up the old stairs to the third floor and then to our classroom. At the door, I take point and open the door ahead of Hanako, bowing my head down in apology in advance. I'm sorry we're late, teacher. I am greeted not by stern words nor by an angered instruction to take my seat, but simply by the silence created by 15 or so students trying not to laugh. Muto, ever tardy, has yet to arrive. However, the fact that Hanako and I have arrived together is blatantly obvious. <laughs> Make that about 14 students trying and one student failing. <laughs> the lovers return! <laughs> yeah, thanks. You can calm down now. I step through the door and realize that Hanako is firmly pressed against my back, hiding herself from the class. With my steps coming closer to my desk, she eventually breaks from me and stiffly walks to her own. Her efforts to mentally block everyone's presence from her mind are written fairly clearly on her face. Quickly checking the door for any signs of the teacher's arrival, I make a trip to Hanako's desk and whisper in her ear. Don't worry about Misha, she's always like this. I enjoyed myself today. Don't sweat it, okay? Hanako nods her head behind her, folded arms, but still doesn't show her face. I yearn to stay and console her more, but Muto picks this exact moment to enter the class halfway through his lecture, as if he started it in the hallway. Which, of course, is directly proportional to the charge, but inversely proportionally to the square of the distance. He's so engrossed in his speech that he doesn't even notice me sneaking back into my seat from Hanako's desk. While Muto's spiel rambles on, Misha leans over to me. The teacher may not have noticed your tardiness, but I did. That much is obvious from the show you just put on. I have been instructed to let you off the hook for today, but only on one condition. Oh, and what would that be? You have to help us this afternoon. I crane my neck to look over Misha's shoulder. Shizune is conveniently not making eye contact with me. Fine, just for today. I've already told you I'm not joining the council, remember? Of course, doing so could be considered... um, considered... She looks down at her notebook, obviously looking for her place in her script. Under duress and hence would be against regulations. How very strange of you to be considerate of the regulations now. Things should be done by the book. It's just that the book hasn't been written for every situation, so there are times when it can be ignored. And yet you two wonder why no one else wants to be in the student council. After poking her tongue out at me, Misha returns to her workbook and we battle our way through the latter half of the school day. Before I could even stand up, Misha and Shizune have placed their hands on both my shoulders. Hey, I said I'd help out. Damn. This is just insurance, Hisao. Insurance! He Hisao? Hanako timidly tries to leave the room by circling around us, and I suddenly realize that this may be my one chance to escape. Oh, hey, Hanako. What's up? Hey, what makes you think you've got time to chat? Oh, relax. This won't take long. Sorry, Hanako, you were saying? I... I was going to go to the library and... and I thought... Hanako's thumbs dance around each other and her eyes flit around the room, looking everywhere but at us. Sorry, Hanako, but he still has to come with us. He's got work to do. Oh, but you can help too if you'd like. Um... So how about it, he Sal? Alrighty! Every single decision gate in Act 2 is pivotal. And you have to get a positive on every single one with Hanako, otherwise you're going to get a neutral or bad ending. We don't want that, so... What I'm going to say is, I've done enough work for the council already. Goodbye! Hey, Shizune, I know I said I'd help, but I forgot I'd already made plans. Besides, I helped out more than my fair share last week, didn't I? I promise I'll make it up to you some other time. Shizune and Misha release their grip on me and have a long, deep, and silent conversation. 
Well, you have a point there. To be honest, we were only going to spend the rest of the budget on cakes. So if you're not there, it works out better. More cake for us. <laughs> Shizune about faces and marches out the door, and Misha skips out after her. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Last week, those two were like bloodhounds, or prison guards. Or maybe prison guards bred from bloodhounds. I can't believe I just thought that, let alone saying it out loud. I think I need to move away from Kenji. Never mind. Anyway, should we go to the library? Sh sure. <laughs> Hanako follows me through the still crowded halls to the library, using me as a shield. As soon as we are through the door, Hanako bolts for the counter where Yuko is stacking books. Before I could catch up, Hanako has whispered something to her. Um, you'd find that in the nonfiction, but I don't know where exactly. If you want, I could look it up. N never mind. Hey, Yuko, what's all this about? Oh, Hisao. Hanako was just looking for a book on... N nothing A book on nothing? In the nonfiction section? I... I was just... I shoot a glance at Yuko. She looks like she's about to burst from the pressure of keeping Hanako's request secret. Yuko, what did... Chess! She's looking for a chess book. I make a mental note to never entrust Yuko with any important information. Y yuko I'm sorry, Hanako. It just slipped out. Well, it's not... as Well, it's not a secret anymore. Come on, I'll give you a hand. I should really brush up on my skills, too. Uh, okay. Yuko disappears behind the counter in shame as Hanako and I wander into the depths of the non-fiction section. I know there is supposed to be a system for categorizing these books, but I don't see how anyone could decipher it without spending half their life researching it. That's probably why all the librarians I know are neurotic. Towards the end of the aisle, between a book on card tricks and some books on kids' games, stands a single book bearing the title, Chess Tactics for Champions. Before I can reach for it, Hanako has the book in her hands, clutching it to her chest. Well, I guess that's yours, then. Mind if I borrow it when you're finished? Sure. I... I just haven't really played against anyone but L Lily before, so I thought... Damn. It's not like I was trying to beat Hanako deliberately or anything, but she seems to have taken it to heart. Then again, at least this means she wants to play me again. That's a plus, right? Ha! <laughs> well, it's not like I'm a master or anything. I just played it a bit before. It occurs to me that I haven't told Hanako about my condition. I falter for a second, deciding to cover my tracks. That is a conversation for another day. Before I came here... Before I came here... Are... Are you alright? Yeah, I was just remembering something. When I think about it, I shouldn't be afraid to tell Hanako about my condition and my time in the hospital. Judging by her scars, she probably spent a fair amount of time in a hospital bed. But for some reason, I can't bring it up. At least not today, and not on short notice. Eager to, br eager to break off the conversation, I grab a random book from the shelf. It's some book on the world's fastest roller coasters. Published in 1982. Well, not very up to date, but it should at least be interesting. Well, we both got books now. Should we go sit down? Hanako seems to accept my bluff, and we head to the reading nook in the back of the library. Neither of us says a word. We simply open our books and start reading. I tried to read my book, but as it would seem that in 1982 roller coasters weren't nearly as large as the ones built in the decades since. Most of the ones listed are made of wood. Something about that doesn't seem safe to me. Yes! Splinters left and right! <laughs> if I'm going to write on something potentially dangerous, I want it to be made out of steel or some kind of space-age alloy that has big words like titanium and ruthenium. I quickly lose interest and my eyes wander across the reading area to rest on Hanako. Hanako seems absorbed in her book, flicking back and forth through the pages as if confirming what she just read. I wonder if that's actually effective, or if she's just overloading herself. She unconsciously brushes her hair from her face, temporarily revealing her scar tissue. I'm still not sure about the protocol here. Is it right to ask about her scars, or her past? How long was she in the hospital? Does she still have a visit to the doctor? These all seem like the questions that you'd ask someone- uh, These all seem like the questions that you'd ask someone who just transferred to your school, translated into the local language. But, to date, no one has directly asked me any of them. Well, except Rin, but I don't think I should use her as a guide to proper social behavior. For the time being, I'll just keep my mouth shut. If someone wants you to know something, then they'll tell you. 
Trying to force the issue might drive Hanako back into herself. Um, sorry to interrupt, but I have to close the library now. Already? I checked my watch. Somehow, as I was lost in thought, nearly two hours have passed. Do you want to check out those books? I could do it on the way out. P please I'm done. I'll drop this one back on the way through. It wasn't as interesting as I first thought. Hanako marks her place with a slip of paper and stands up. The girls head to the counter and I return my book to what I think is the right shelf. Yuko scans Hanako's book with practi practice pre precision, yet still manages to fumble it. Oh, there we go. Third time lucky. Since this is a non-fiction book, you can only have it for a week. That, that's okay. Yuko shuts down the library's computer and herds us out the door. Arg, I didn't think it was this late already. But you're the one that told us you had to close. Yes, but I know, but that was before I looked at the time. I'll see you later. Yuko bolts down the hall, her handbag trailing behind her like an awkward streamer. I guess all librarians really are neurotic. Huh? Ah, uh, never mind. I was just thinking that I've never met a librarian that could organize their time, no matter how good they are with their books. Oh, I n know what you mean. Hanako smiles in amusement. It wasn't meant to be a joke, but I must have reminded her of some other librarian, or something. I... I have to get back. Yeah, me too. I didn't realize it was this late. Thanks for letting me hang out with you. N no problem. I'm going to my dormitory room now anyway, so do you mind if I tag along? Okay. Hanako sets off ahead of me, and I need to jog a little to reach her side. We walk through the gardens, eventually arriving in front of the dorm buildings. Man, you walk pretty fast. I used to play in a soccer club, and you managed to outpace me. I kind of regret saying that. It has less to do with her pace than with the fact that my condition has significantly worsened my fitness. Hanako's reaction is odd. I expected an awkward attempt to downplay her walking speed, but she just blushes while looking at her feet and smiling. Silence hangs in the air between us. That happens often around Hanako, but feels slightly different than usual this time. After a few seconds, I try to break the silence. Here you go. See you in class tomorrow? Sh sure. Hanako waves a short goodbye before pushing her way through the dorm's doors. I stand and look at them for a while before making my way to my own dormitory room. And the day is done. Already, Rue, what's up next for us? Chirping birds. Normally, this would be a good time to reflect upon the beauty of nature. But it is 6 a.m. Covering my head with the pillow, I slam my face into the mattress, hoping that the impact will send me instantly back to sleep. Futile. I toss and turn, but sleep simply won't return to me. Alright, nature, you've won! See? I'm getting up now. The lack of sleep weighs my mind down, and there's only one remedy for this. A nice hearty breakfast. It would be nice to be the first person here. To be the first to dig into a piping hot pile of food. To sit wherever I desire. It would have been nice. But even my exceptionally early start has put me behind the most diligent students. I guess there are quite a few people that have early starts here. For one reason or another. A group of students in sports clothes huddle around one table. Eagerly discussing game plans in between inhaling great gulps of food. Scattered around the hall are a number of bleary-eyed students, probably suffering from the same ailment as myself. Noisy birds. And of course, there are the people that actually enjoy getting up this early, the ones with their bags stuffed with textbooks and completed homework. It's hard not to despise people like that, even more so when you're tired yourself. Picking out a familiar face from the thin crowd, I head towards the nearest table. Lily sits alone, delicately feeling her way around a small plate of eggs with her fork. It's almost a shame to interrupt her in her clockwork movements. I wonder, is this how a blind person zones out? Simply moving in predetermined patterns learned over the years, just like how a sighted person would eat while reading a newspaper? Good morning, Lily. I didn't expect you to be here this early. Oh, Hisao, you startled me. I didn't know you took breakfast this early. I don't. This is an exception to the rule. I'd greatly prefer to be late to school than early to breakfast. Lily gives a small sigh at my admitted tardiness as I begin eating my food. It doesn't take long for her to lapse back into our previous minds, mindless nibbling. Each short motion lacks energy. I suppose this is similar to letting your eyes wander while performing any ordinary chore. 
But after a few repetitions of the fine food eat food cycle, Lily puts down her fork and dabs her lips with a napkin. Hey Sal, do you mind if I ask you a question? Damn! All I want is a little food and about four hours of sleep and nobody says... I Can I ask you a question for a simple question? Sure. Do you think of Hanako as a friend? Huh? This seems like a leading question. I guess so. Why do you ask? No real reason. I do have another question, though. Why is it that you think of her as a friend? This is well above my level. What is she expecting from me? I'm not really sure. I guess it's because she's a little different in the way she deals with people. Hmm. Since I've known her, she hasn't really connected with anyone. She doesn't seem interested in other people, and I think people are a little scared off by her appearance. Really? I thought that kind of thing was well discouraged here. Discriminating and such. Hmm. If I were to put it one way. She furrows her brow in thought, a move which makes me slightly anxious as to what she's plucking from her mind. I'd say that you're a little naive. Naive? I'd be insulted if not for the slightly cynical grin on her face. I... See. While Yamaku has a stronger sense of community compared to other schools, it's far from being free of conflict. Rules cannot remove human nature. After all, only suppress it. That's some that's something I've noticed actually. Just little things like how certain people and cliques avoid each other in the hallways. It's no different than my old school, really. Even Lily and Shizune could be considered bitter rivals, even though they both seem like fairly accepting people. Well, at least the Misha-tinted Shizune does. Who knows what actually goes on with her fingers and behind her glasses. I guess you're right, but when I first came here, everything was a bit of a shock. I kept on making mistakes, or at least thinking I was making mistakes. Like when we first met, I said, and I said, I see to you. I didn't know if that was considered rude or anything, so I tried to put it in the back of my mind. Treating people any differently and that kind of thing. So I didn't. I told myself that Hanako and you and everyone else was just normal, and I tried to ignore the obvious. I talked to Hanako as if she were any other person, and so we became friends. At least that's how I think it happened. But you know, I feel guilty just from saying something like that aloud, as if I took, as if it took extra effort to think of Hanako, or you or anyone else here as normal people. I don't think that's right. Hisao, I think you are naive, but I also think that you are a good person. It is perhaps one of your better traits. I suppose I could take that as a compliment. Tell me, are you free tonight? If you don't count homework, then I'm as free as the breeze. In that case, would you care to join myself and Hanako for tea? Er, I don't really have that much money at the moment, so going out isn't really... Oh, I didn't mean going out. Just here, this evening. You can access the classrooms in the evening here? No, that's not what I meant. Hanako and I often use my room for tea parties together. Please feel free to please feel free to drop by after dusk. Sure, I see no problem with that. What's your room number? 225. Room 25 on the second floor. Okay, sure. Well then, I had best be off. I have class representative duties to attend to, after all. Until this evening, Hisao. Yeah, catch you later. Hang on. Was I just invited to a girl's room after hours? Is that even allowed? There is a curfew here, but I've never heard any rules about visitors in the dorm rooms. Even still, this is enough to get my sleep-deprived brain jump-started. Add that to a lukewarm breakfast and you have one hell of a pick-me-up. I grudgingly go to class, still a little excited at the prospect of breaking the rules. I feel like a little kid plotting to sneak out of his window at night. Well, maybe that's going a little too far, but when you compare an invitation to a party to six or so hours of lectures, I know which one wins. Misha and Shizune do, a little to re do little to relieve my boredom either. For once, they seem determined to actually complete Muto's assignments. Nevertheless, the day eventually winds to a close. I hurry back to my room to wash up and comb my hair. Thankfully, I don't run into Kenji. Before long, I am leaving the boys' dorm. I nervously rap on the door and mark 225, checking my watch once again. Is that you, Hisao? The door is open. You can come in. 
Lily's voice lifts through the door and soothes my nerves. This is the first time I've been invited to a girl's room after dark. Even though I know there is no ulterior motive behind this invitation, it doesn't stop my mind running wild with possibilities. One guy, two girls, in a dorm room, with a tea set. When I put it like that, it sounds a little dodgy. Giving a small sigh to steady myself, I gingerly put my hand on the handle and opened the door, craning my head to see inside. Oh my. The door opens completely and I catch my first glimpse of Lily's room. Her furniture looks almost antique, but the bare walls and flat surfaces are barely decorated at all. In the center of the room sits a low table where I see a small tea set at rest. It seems that everything in this room has its place, possibly excepting the several piles of books stacked up against the wall. My sense of vision isn't the only one to be stimulated. The faint smell of something can be picked up on the air. Nail polish, perfume, makeup, it's hard to describe in any way other than girly. My eyes finish their quick sweep of the room before returning their position onto the girls. Lily sits next to the small table wearing very dark blue pajamas, dark blue pajamas with shorts that show off plenty of her alluring pale legs. Opposite her, Hanako sits adorned in a conservative light pink gown. Her hands are firmly fixed between her legs, her shoulders forward and her head down as if trying to hide herself in it. Oh my god, so cute! <laughs> it would be easy for her to do. It looks about two sizes too big for her. Waves of flannel flow from her frame, making her look like a child playing dress-up in her parents' clothes. She looks up to confirm my identity, and the beginnings of a thin smile creep across her face before vanishing so fast that I can't be sure they were ever there. There's no point in you standing in the doorway, Hisao. I take a step into the room, closing the door behind me. My, my, I'm afraid this really is a small room for the three of us. Would you like to take a seat? I slowly walk to the table and sit down, trying my hardest not to disturb anything along the way. I also can't help but steal a quick glance into Lily's top as I sit. Perv! To be robbed of sight would be a most terrible fate. Well now, how about some tea? Hanako, could you please pour? Sure, sure, sure. He, so, would, would you, would you like? I would love some tea. Do you need a hand? N no, I'm fine. Thank you. Lily finds it difficult to resist a smile at her companion's nervousness, something I can't really blame her for. Been a tiring day? Y yeah. I relax at my place, opposite of the cabinet. To my left is the blue-clad Lily, and to my right sits the pink Hanako. The tea set on the table looks cute as well as practical, painted red with a floral motif. It looks odd when contrasted with Lily's plain but generally sophisticated looking furniture, which leads me to think that Hanako might have picked it out. There is a slight ting when Hanako accidentally clips the teapot on a cup as she is pouring. She breathes in sharply. She must be really nervous, as it's not the kind of thing anyone would worry about. Hanako quivers at her mistake. It's okay, Hanako. There's no need to be nervous. Hanako seems to find some confidence in Lily's reassuringly soft-spoken words, and deftly pours the next two cups. Here you are, Hisao. Lily. Hanako carefully places a cup and saucer in front of Lily and myself. I can get used to service like this. Thank you, Hanako. Yeah, thanks. Y you're welcome. Lily searches for her cup, and upon finding it, sips delicately. I do the same. This tea tastes somewhat better than the tea we usually have at school. This is nice. It's so different from any tea I had before. Looks like you picked the right one, Hanako. You've done well, even if it was a bold move. Hanako's smile returns, redoubled. Even with her blighted face, her shy smile couldn't be called anything but cute. I'm glad you like it. Hanako, finally beginning to relax, sips from her cup. Something about this makes me think about Lily's question at breakfast. At breakfast bleh. <laughs> Why am I friends with Hanako? Lily seems genuinely concerned for Hanako's well-being, but it's not like I could do anything to help her. As far as I could tell, her scars don't hold her back physically, and everyone I've met seems to have overcome their disabilities to some extent. I don't have any ulterior motives to hang out with Hanako, we just share similar interests. Isn't that enough? So, Hisao, are you enjoying yourself? 
Lily's words break me out of my reverie, and I take a second to reconsider where I am. I'm in a room with two girls in their bedclothes. This is something to be enjoyed. Yeah, it's relaxing. Almost like I'm not in the school anymore. Do you do this often? Quite often, but not as often as we take tea in the school building. Considering they do that nearly every day, that's not a big surprise. As I move to take another sip from my teacup, I find it sadly empty. That was delicious. Thank you, Hanako. Lily. You're welcome. Yes, you're most welcome, Hisao. It's nice to have a third person here. Well, anytime you need someone to fill that position, I'm always available. Always. One must be sure to get one's point across in these circumstances. Lily lets, a, lets Lucy yawn, which she unsuccessfully hides with her hand. Pardon me, I think I'm a little tired. I think we're all a little tired. My, my, how astute we are tonight, Hanako. We really should head to bed. We all have class tomorrow. Yeah, I should go. Thank you for your presence, Hisao. Th thanks. You'll come again? Not even a whole army could stop me. I'm impressed by your determination, Hisao. Either way, you're right. We'd best get going. I stand up and make for the door. Hanako gingerly stands up behind me. I stop and face her. Are you coming with me? Hanako instantly blossoms into full blush. <laughs> no. I... not... this room isn't... It's okay, I was only joking. Oh. Okay. Good night. Good night, Hanako. Good night, Hisao. Night, all. And with that, our tea party finishes. I'm still not sure what it is that Lily wants me to do for Hanako, but I don't want to let her down. I wait until the door is closed behind us before turning to Hanako. Hey, Hanako. You know, you don't have to be nervous around me or anything. I mean, we're friends, right? We're... right. We're... friends. If you ever want to hang out or anything, just let me know. We still need to have that chess rematch, remember? Sh sure. But, but I don't think you'll win. It wouldn't be any fun if it was that easy. Hanako seems to give a muted laugh, but she could have just as easily been exhaling. G good night, Hisao. With that, Hanako quickly retreats into a room, located next to Lily's. I start to walk back to my dorm, but the simple act of walking seems to drain me of my energy. I barely make it to my room before I am hit by a wave of exhaustion. I kick off my shoes, fall into bed, and fall asleep by the time my head hits the pillow. And another day is done! And considering we're closing in on the 30 minute mark, I'm probably going to cut it off at the start of this day, and we'll resume this game in part 13. I pull my door closed, ready for another day of classes. And with that being said, folks, we'll stop it here, so stay tuned for Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Part 13, when we'll hopefully dodge Kenji in this hallway and get to our class and hopefully see Hanako again. Anyways, later, peoples!